All right, good afternoon everybody. Mr. Tribble here again, howdy howdy. And today we are talking about succession. Now in class we've covered biodiversity, but today we're gonna to talk about how it contributes to ecological succession. Here is the teak that we are working with right now. The student is expected to observe and describe how different environments, including microhabitats in schoolyards and biomes, support different varieties of organisms. Describe how biodiversity contributes to the sustainability of an ecosystem and observe, record, and describe the role of ecological succession. Okay, so let's get started. Just what the heck are you talking about with succession, Mr. Tribble? All right, here's how it works out. We've talked about biodiversity. This is how many different organisms you have living in an area, all the different kinds, from your bacteria all the way up to your elephants. Succession is what happens when you are starting from scratch. If you have an area of land where there's not a whole lot of stuff and you have to build up a forest from nothing, that's what succession is essentially. The more academic definition is a series of changes in an ecosystem in which new population of organisms gradually replace existing ones. And what that means is like you replace grasses with bigger shrubs, with bigger trees, on and on and on and up and up and up and up. And there's two kinds of succession. First, you have what's called primary succession. And this is what happens when you're starting from bare rock. It's like all you have is a bunch of rocks, and you're wanting to have some organisms that live there. You're looking to start a forest. Well, you don't usually get this a whole lot in real life. There's really only two times where you see complete primary succession. The first one is volcanoes. Big old volcano erupts, a lot of lava flows down into the ocean or maybe just down the mountainside, kills off everything, or makes brand new rock, and so you're starting literally from nothing. That's called primary succession. You're starting from the bare rock. You can also have it occasionally if glaciers move out of the way, big frozen patches, and leave nothing but rock behind. You'll see primary succession there too. But then, you need to start an ecosystem somehow. And the first things that crop up are your lichens, like you see behind me here. These little mossy kinds of things. Those are your very first things that colonize rocks. And from there, you start off with lichens and moss. You move up to small herbs and shrubs, as you see right here. Then you'll get bigger grasses and bigger shrubs. Then you'll start getting your more complex trees, and on and on and up and up and up and up and up. And that's primary succession. And you're building to what's called a climax community, and that is a stable, mature community. That's where you get to an ecosystem that is sustainable and one that's going to last for a while. Like in Texas, you'd be looking at either deciduous forest or high grassland, depending on what part of Texas you're in. And again, here's another example of primary succession. You're starting from nothing down here. First things you get are your lichens and your moss. Then you get your grasses and your herbs and your shrubs and your tree seedlings. Then your larger pines and spruces and such like. And then your much, much taller trees. But this isn't the only kind of succession you might have. There's also something called secondary succession. And this is what happens. You're not starting from bare rock in this case, but something bad has happened. Either you've had a natural disaster that's taken place or some sort of human actions. But you're not starting from bare rock. You have existing soil to build off of. For example, you have a big forest fire. You're not starting from bare rock. You still have you know, some dirt there and that kind of thing, but you'll have a lot of dead stuff or something as simple as a farmer plowing his field. In this case, you don't have as far to go. You're not starting from bare rock, and so you don't necessarily need the lichens and the moss and that kind of thing. You'll start off from essentially what are annual plants, stuff that grows there anyway. And after that, you'll build up from your plants and your grasses, your shrubs, your bigger trees, your even bigger trees and such like as that. But secondary succession doesn't take as long because you're not starting from the bare rock. Okay, now this is the big one. This is the concept that I want you to take away from this. The higher your biodiversity, the more biodiversity you have in your ecosystem, the better that ecosystem is going to withstand environmental stress, the better it can handle it. You can have other organisms. If an organism dies out, you'll have organisms to step in and fill their void in the food web. 
So if you lose biodiversity, if your biodiversity goes down or if you have low biodiversity to begin with, that ecosystem is going to have less ability to withstand the same environmental stresses like natural disasters. All right. Thanks much for watching. I'll talk to you all later. See ya.